You're listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk, your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. Welcome to show number 269. Today is Sunday, July 6th, 2014, and my name is Steve. Happy 4th of July weekend, everybody. And we are back at full strength here with both Hammy and Kurt, so let's get to it. Yeah, yeah. So guys, in tonight's show, we'll talk about Gaddis going to the DL, BJ going to the one spot in the order, and Mike Miner's struggles. But first, guys, the streak. So while it ended today with the three-run loss to the Diamondbacks, um, that nine-gamer was fantastic, right? And one of the best things about it, in my opinion, was that not just one part of the team was surging, you know, like covering up for deficiencies for other parts of the team. It was all working during those nine games. So let's take a look at all those amazing performances and talk about them. What was working so well? So, Ham, yeah. how do you start off with the offense? All right, and it, and I would say offensively, uh, a lot of things were working. Um, and so just looking over, you know, all of our games this week, so it was some pretty interesting stats and some very heartening stats. So we are first in the National League and tied for second in the majors and run scored over the past seven days with 46. All right? Angel and Orioles are also at the top, but they both have played one more game than us. And they both hit around 14 homers each. I think one had 13, one had 15. We've had two. We've had two homers and, and, and – the one less game and are at the top and run score in the majors. Yeah, the uh, no home run thing is is really remarkable, the sort of facelift of the offense in that way. Fewest in the National League, fewest in the majors. Um, we led the major le- majors in stolen bases this week with seven. Um, BJ was third in the National League and run scored with six. So my first question is, who is this team? It's like Freaky Friday or something that's going on here. This team has completely switched and it's, you know, it's really been since the BJ at the top of the lineup started doing well. Uh, I think we can talk about Andrelton later and contributing, but I think the the most remarkable thing is just how different this team is. Not that we're actually winning. It's just that we are winning in a completely different way. Do you guys think that Freddie really was like, okay, I'm going to move BJ to the top Simmons second, if BJ starts getting on, I'm going to have him steal all the time. We're going to run the bases more aggressively. A lot of aggressive base running over that nine-game win streak. Yep. I'm going to bunt more. Like, was there this conscious offensive personality kind of decision made, or did it all sort of start to happen organically? I, I, I suppose the BJ stealing thing was always um, known that they would do that. But the other stuff, what do you think? I think it's a little bit of both. Maybe. I think Freddie's riding it a little bit. That, you know, players started to play well and uh, and the team sort of took shape in this way and then he started to push it in this way. I don't think he I don't think he's that risky in putting stuff out there sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um so I don't know. I mean, you know, the other things about the offense is just looking back to the, the past fourteen days, it, um is BJ and Andrelton, right? And um dating back to Houston, um BJ's batting, you know, and today obviously knocked this down to like 260, but he's still batting high, uh, having a high batting average. And this week, he was, you know, lead, heading to today's game 350. He had that huge uh, hitting streak, uh, hitting triples, um, three stolen bases, a homer, and then and scoring 10 runs, uh, which was second only to Freeman over the past two weeks. So BJ is doing everything that he needs to be doing in the leadoff spot, um, you know, within considerations still with who he is. Uh, and then you have Simmons right behind him over the past 12 games has hit 311. Um, he doesn't, he's not striking out. He's got a high OBP is slugging as high. So, you know, those guys are sort of fitting in at the top of the lineup and you, we can say about the competition or whatever, but um, I, I feel confident in them as a one, two right now, right now. Yeah. And Hammy last week, when the, the you know the the BJ to the one was still pretty fresh, I went bonkers. I still think it's an insane decision, but you can't argue with the results this week. Uh, you know, so was I completely wrong? Is and were you right that that psychologically this was going to help BJ? He was going to relax. He certainly let off a bunch in Tampa Bay. Do you think he's really more comfortable here, or is this just fluky? 
Uh, I, I want to believe that he's more comfortable here. I, I think he's not, you know, obviously he has not been winning these games by himself. Um, Freddie and Justin are, are the true hogs on this team in terms of carrying the load. Um, but he's getting, I mean, he's getting on base some, not like, you know, insane. He doesn't have some 400 OBP, but he was getting on base. To your point, he was, he scored a bunch of runs, had some relatively big hits. Yeah. I so, you know what? I'm playing it. No, I know. And you're still against it. But I think, I think Stevie, we still need to see, right? It, it's not been against the best pitching. Um, it, it's certainly been a comfortable place to, to get comfortable. Uh, and so as we, you know, and this next week coming up, I think it's still a good place for him to be. Uh, we, time will tell when, when he maybe faces some really good pitching and struggles a bit, how he does then. But for now, I think he's, I believe in this run. Um, and I don't think this is completely fluky. Well, and he'll have to go really south for a, a good bit of time before Freddie thinks about moving him. He's going to be there for a while. There's and no I'm okay. doubt. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with letting Freddie sit with Simmons and and BJ one two and just let you know this is their potential. The way that we're they're contributing and we're sort of playing behind them. I would I say let's ride it. All right, Hammy. Got anything else on the offense? Um, just that, that you know that we haven't hit a lot of homers and um, and there's still people who are not playing well. This past week we had a, a bunch of guys, uh, you know, Hayward, Listella, they're sort of below average. Chris Johnson is not doing great, and we're still winning, and we're still putting together a good offense. So I still think that we're winning in a you know we're producing a f- offensively in a s- more sustainable way. I think there's room for improvement. Um, Bethancourt has been great. Excited to see how he continues to contribute there. Um, and, and, and the last thing I would say is we're still a team that we go as Freddie and, and Justin go still, because they're still the two guys who are carrying us. Uh, and they've been playing really well over, during this stretch. Did Listella have bad numbers this week? I thought he had some pretty good games. Over the past two weeks, he's 239. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair enough. Um, so, Curtis, how about the starting pitching? Because the starting pitching's been looking really good, too. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of going back to the strength of the the team. And it looks a lot like uh, April, um, a lot of these. Obviously, the offense has picked up, but it's timely hitting, which they were getting in April. Um, it's good starting pitching in the in the bullpen, too. So it's really kind of... They don't have to score a ton of runs. It's a lot of quality starts that they've gotten, um, other than Minor. I know we'll talk about him independently of this whole operation. But um, over the stretch, you know, it's 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 almost eight eight innings a start, which is always great. Um, giving up two runs a game, which is even better, and really limiting the home runs. I, I know that some of these guys have been plagued by giving up some home runs, like Santana. Certainly, Minor is from a real problem with him, but. Um, over the stretch, they they only gave up uh, seven home runs, so that's that's pretty good too. I know that that obviously on the on the flip side that you guys were just talking about that we're not hitting a lot of home runs, but it's just as important as we saw today, uh, the game that finally ended the streak, uh, the critical home run that uh, Wood gave up. He pitched a great game. It was just you know that one bad misstep where he walked the pitcher, and then Goldschmidt uh, hit a two out. Homer, which really was was the decider, but not walking a lot of guys. Um, I, Tehran had one start where he walked a lot of guys, but there's really not a lot of walks in this whole uh, series of games. I mean, you can't really pick one guy that 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 stood out. I, obviously, Tehran is is the best of the lot, but Santana had two amazing starts after he yeah. had been so bad for yeah, so, so long. So bad. I mean, uh, yeah. That's who um, I'm most. I mo- feel most excited about. Just, I mean, Tehran a close second, but I'm most excited about Santana and his and, last two starts. And you know, Harang, who obviously had some trouble in that first inning on Saturday, and then goes eight without his best stuff, but pitches around it and goes eight innings and doesn't give up another run. That was really a great start by Harang, too. Yeah, but, and they didn't. Obviously, the team didn't really help out Harang yesterday too much with uh, their defense and stuff like that. So, um, but you know, Hale stepped in and had great 
five innings, which really helped. Um, he only gave up one run. It really, that you know, you look at this, the only glaring thing, really, I, Haran gave up a lot of hits. I guess that's what we're just going to have to deal with with him. He gave up 20 hits in his two starts, which is obviously a high number, but um, the only number that really jumps out at you on this whole list, because Hale obviously was a fill-in. He only pitched five innings. But a uh, minor start was really the only one that, that uh, gives you any sort of concern, and this is kind of a, a theme with him. But, you know, it, this, is, this is where the strength of this team has been for so long. It's amazing, again, we don't even talk about the Gavin Floyd has gone for the season. <laughs> right, didn't you know? Uh, didn't miss a beat. Uh, and, and how well, you, and I mean, beyond well, he was pitching brilliantly, and that's the third starting pitcher that they've lost. And the beat goes on. I mean, Wood came up, had two tremendous starts. Obviously, he got the loss today, but he pitched great. So, he did it's, great. Uh, it yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just you know, it's uh, it's a magical run that continues with the starting pitching on this team. And when they, you know, I mean, it, it, we talk about the the Ham. You talked about Justin and Freeman being the the cog in the offense. Well, the cog of the team is clearly the starting pitching. I mean, it, it all relies on them, and it and it's amazing that they've been able to shoulder that burden so much this season and and just continue. Like we saw them, there's some dips and bumps there when they weren't playing so well, and and it got to the point where you were only getting you know two or three good starts out of a week, and the other one other ones were kind of shaky. Well, this is. This has really been a great stretch. Now, again, you know, we, we can talk about who they played and that not the best offenses in the world, but they did their job, you know. And, and I think it feeds off each other, Curtis. Sure. I think, like, you know, I mean, I think once the offense starts, you know, the, the starting pitching was carrying the, the load for so long, but I think when the offense went in the, in the toilet for that stretch there, I think it put a lot of pressure on the starting pitching. And I think now that the offense is starting to show signs of life, I think it allows them to be who they really are. Um, yeah, and, and, and Ham, you know, the other facet that's come around is the bullpen. <clears throat> you know, d- during that terrible stretch after the 17-7 and seven start, when the team was sub-500, we started pointing at the, at, the, um, at the bullpen because the bullpen was looking pretty bad. I mean, particularly like around the time of that Boston series, David Carpenter was a huge problem, uh, you know, in the bullpen. Avilan was really struggling. Varvaro was kind of struggling. But the bullpen was almost perfect during the nine-game streak. I mean, they, during those nine games, they went 22 and two-thirds and gave up one earned run. And today they gave up another earned run, but two more innings. You know, so two earned over 24 and two-thirds. For the bullpen. Now, part of that is David Carpenter was gone for all of it. (laughs) And it's a little weird. Carpenter, you know, was reinstated and is back on the 25 man as of Wednesday, but they still haven't thrown him yet. I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't know why he didn't at least like come in today. It seemed like it would have been an opportunity. Yeah. But, you know, all of them. Varvaro, four and two thirds scoreless. Walden, four scoreless. Avilon, four and a third scoreless. I'm sorry, Uh, Walden four and a third scores, Avilon three and two thirds with one run. I mean, the bullpen. Simmons. Yeah, Shea Simmons, right, four and two thirds. I mean, just great. Yeah. Uh, You know, when it's all clicking like that and the offense can get going, it's it's a formidable team. But so, you know, someone mentioned it earlier about the sub 500 teams that we faced during the streak. Does it take a little bit of the shine off it for you? Are you less impressed by it? Kurt, what do you think? I'm not, I, yes and no, yes and no. Uh, you have to win the games. I mean, that, that's the old cliche. They're all professional baseball teams. These are three of the worst, the third of the worst teams in Major League Baseball. Um, and so, but you know, it's the first time you've swept a four game series in Philadelphia since they were playing at Connie Mack stadium 50 years ago. I understand that you probably don't play four game series at, uh, Philadelphia every single year, but 50 years when you were in the Milwaukee Braves that regardless of how good, bad, whatever, you've been really great teams over the course of that 50 years. They've been really awful teams over the course of that 50 years. That's saying something. Um, yeah, the, the teams have not been that great, but to win nine games in a row in the major league level, including a four game sweep on the road, that's an pretty impressive, pretty impressive feat, regardless of who you're playing. Yeah. And the other thing is in three of those games, they were down in game two against the Phillies. They came back from two zip game one against the Mets. They were down three zip and game two against the Diamondbacks. They were down three zip. This team doesn't do that earlier this year. 
right? Like there's a big mental component here that as a fan, I'm not as depressed now when I see them go down two zip, three zip. And that that's got to be a lot more in the clubhouse, right? I mean, they've got to have more confidence about being down that, wait, the offense actually produces, guys are getting on, we're getting a lot of hits per game, we can come back from this, it's okay, guys. I I guarantee you they weren't feeling that way a month ago. Yeah. And you you can only... You can only play the teams you're scheduled against, right? And all the cliches. And you got to take care of business when you do. And they did. They're taking care of business. And obviously, when we come up against the Dodgers and the Cardinals and maybe the Brewers, we got to do it. But for now, we're winning on our terms. We're scratching together wins when we need to. Stevie, like you said, we're winning in a lot of different ways. It doesn't feel fluky. Uh, and, you, and, and you have to do that regardless of the competition. So now we just got to keep it going. But it's this is not, you know, this is legitimate. Yeah, let's like for real though, you know, take three of four against New York and and keep it going. You know what I mean? Like like this Absolutely. all this all feels much less worthwhile if we go in and split or lose three in uh, at City Field. Well, and Washington hasn't had the toughest schedule in the world either that they and they've managed to lose those some of those games. So yeah. you you know, you got to go out and play the games. I, I I hate clichés. You did beat Kyle Kendrick, you know? I mean, there are there are little facets of this that that make it more compelling than just, "Oh, we beat really bad teams." You beat Kyle Kendrick who you can never beat. Yep. Uh you beat a team that came into Atlanta and swept you uh what a week before this happened, a week and a, a week, half before a this week happened. Before, yeah. So you know, I mean, you, we can we can dump on these teams. Uh, Philadelphia is loaded with with really at one time great players. Ryan Howard has destroyed us this year, so you can take solace as a fan that this is this is good stuff. You know, I mean that there's yes, these are not the best teams in Major League Baseball right now, but it 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 was a good run. That was a great streak. All right, guys. So for the not so good news. Evan Gaddis went on the 15-day DL Uh. with a bulging thoracic disc. Um, And as of today, Sunday, he's still not cleared for any baseball activities, including running. There was a quote, something about this is, um, you know, it's depressing. I'm not getting it exactly right, but it's depressing. Uh, You know, I just need to wait it out and watch what I eat. Like that, that, that's what he's doing right now is making sure he doesn't get fat while he can't do any exercise. Um, so, you know, the, and there's no announced timetable for his return. So, guys, if he's gone for an extended period, how big a deal do you think that this is to the team and their chances this year, Kurt? It makes me nervous, especially being a catcher and a back. Those two things don't seem to go together because crouching, I, I, my back is not the best, and bending down to tie my shoes sometimes doesn't make me feel so good. So um, now I am a highly tuned athlete, just like Evan Gaddis, so I can see the comparisons. But it does make me nervous. You're great, um, yeah. great, great <laughs> That's hand. right. Um, and it's funny that, you know, there was talk that they would move him, they would move Betancourt up and move Gaddis out. I know that was kind of a fleeting fancy there for a couple of, uh, weeks, maybe a, just a floated rumor, but, um, well, I, that, I do th- that was when BJ would be the odd man out. Right. Yeah. And you know, maybe he read those things too. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I I, th- I think it's I think it's impactful it, the way he was hitting the the timeliness of his hits and the really constant source of power that we had on our in our lineup. It's it's a it's a loss. Yeah, I mean in the, in his last twenty eight games dating back to May twenty seventh, his slash line was three forty six four ten. As a guy who doesn't walk a ton, six thirty five. He's a hugely important piece to the offense, especially with the guys that disappear. And we have a lot of them, you know, Hayward, Justin, Chris Johnson. I mean, Gaddis and Freddie are the two most dependable guys on the team. We need them. Uh, we just need him. Hammy? I, I, I agree. Uh, I do take solace that Bethancourt has been playing uh, well. Um, you know, I mean, I think he we, he's shown some lights, but we we miss Gaddis and and yeah, him running around the outfield is just not an option, I don't think. Um, but you know, hopefully, hopefully, can send the tide and get him back quickly. Uh, yeah, it's, only- it's not completely dire. Like I think Laird has signs. Um, you know, it's not it's not a complete travesty uh, like it could have been. I think I think we can still hold the line, but we need him back to really ultimately compete. 
Yeah, it's not a train wreck, but the team's just not as good without him. I mean, bottom right. line. All right, guys, before we move on, uh, a quick announcement. So we have a new Facebook fan page. So please, everyone, go out there and like us. You can have a good conversation with us and the fans out there. We are at facebook.com slash Atlanta Baseball Talk. All right, guys, let's move on to over-under. So um, let's talk about BJ a little bit more. So since moving to the one spot, BJ's batting average is um, 260. I think he's 13 for 50 since he moved to the one spot in Houston. So over-under on his batting average the rest of the season, starting tomorrow in New York, rest of the season, over-under 250. Hammy? Oof. I am I am going to go in on BJ and I'm going to say over. I think he is going to hit 260 for the rest of the season. He has found a home. Things are clicking for him. I I, I believe in BJ. Okay, Curtis, over under 250. No, uh, under. I I'll go. I'll, I'll be somewhat uh, positive uh, given his tenure in Atlanta and, and say 240. Um, but I, I can't buy into 250. Yeah, I'll go under as well. I'll go 238. Uh, I don't want it. It'd be great if he could keep riding this. But, you know, you see a day like today, 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, you know, two weeks ago, one that long ago. And it was a, in a huge, ugly strikeout in a big prime situation today, too. Indeed. All right, guys. He, so- he, can't, he can't do well. He needs to be setting the table. I think that's for BJ's best. I don't think he's going to be one of those guys that comes through like Freddie or Justin does when we need RBIs. I think he succeeds setting the table. And I think when, when the pressure's on him like that, he's going to strike out. That's not where he succeeds. I just worry, I just hope he can succeed in those other situations. Are you trying to make me scream about how he's going to have the most at-bats every game on the team? Is that what you're trying to do, Hammy? Do I have to? Fight, 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 okay. fight, 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 fight. Uh, so, guys, Mike Miner had another bad start this past week. Um, over his last five starts, his ERA is 752. So, his over-under on his ERA the rest of the season, and we get two starts with Miner this week, people. So, his over-under ERA rest of the season, 4.52. Curtis. Under, but very, very slightly. Say for twenty-five. Okay, Hammy. I say under. I say under four. I'm, I'm, I'm on minor too. I think he's, he's just not this bad. He's slumping a bit. The, the loss this week was two homers, two, two run homers. He's not this bad, uh, and so I think he will do better. I think he's got to calm down um, and not so get in his head when he gets behind um, or does something stupid. But I think he's a better pitcher than that. Yeah, the home runs, and he brought it up in his post-game conference. Uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, it seems like that's something he can manage. It seems like pitch selection and getting on the same page with his catcher, you know, they can minimize that somewhat, but he's got to make those pitches, right? He's got to make those pitches. Uh, But he's kind of scary this year. I will go under, but I'll go 4.3. He just... It's when he makes a mistake, right? I mean, there's good hits, and he, you know, he he doesn't feel bad about that. But when he does something stupid or gets behind in the count, or walks a guy he should walks a guy, or the calls are going against him, that is when he loses focus and leaves pitches over the plate, and that killed him against the Mets. And so, that's where he's got to mature. He's got the stuff. He's got the. I mean, he is a. He's the same pitcher he was last year. I know he had a little bit of an injury. He's got the same stuff. He's just got to get out of his head. All right, guys, let's move on to Shot in the Dark, our crazy prediction for the coming week. But let's check back on last week. So, Kurt, you predicted that the starters would give up 16 total runs over the week, and the starters did one better for you for a total of 15 runs. Boo. I, I, I'm not sure why you guys thought that was such a soft pick. I don't know. It was like 3.3 3 runs not, a game. No, it was not. Whatever. No, it was th- So what? It was six games, right? But yeah, I said 16, so that's that's less than three runs a game for a starter. That's like two runs a game. Oh, yeah, I guess my math was bad. All right, nice well, work. Still. All right, so Hammy, you predicted quality starts for both Santana and Miner this week. Miner's four and a third, four earned performance. You're so close. That. 
<laughs> so close, yes. Um, and I predicted that Andrelton would hit 300 with one homer. Now, he did hit 458 this week, but no home runs. So we'll give it to Kurt. Kurt, for the month of June, the score here is Kurt 1, me and Hammy 0. Um, month of July. July. Yeah, July. That's what I meant. Kurt already won June. Yeah, that's that's true. All right, let's check in on our uh, listener-submitted shots in the dark for the past week. So Chris Williams from Twitter predicted that Wood and Tehran would both go seven innings, five hits or less, but still get the loss. Tehran gave up four hits in seven innings, got the win. Wood, in today's start, went seven innings, three hits, and got the loss. So nice call there. Tommy P. from Twitter predicted two different Atlanta catchers would hit a homer, no home runs from Laird or Betancourt this week. And Todd from Facebook said that BJ would have the longest active hitting streak in the National League by the end of the week. Of course, his hit streak ended today at 11. Casey McGahee um, with the Marlins is going strong at 12 games through today. Mm. So we'll give it to Chris on Twitter. Nice. Congratulations. Um, so look, let's keep this going. We're asking for listener shots in the dark. We'll pick our favorite few. We'll track it during the week and discuss it on the show next week. You can submit them on Twitter or Facebook and use the hashtag ABTSITD. Submit them before first pitch on Monday. All right, guys. So your shots in the dark for the week. Curtis, what do you got? I'm uh, riding Santana. I think he has a good start. Eight innings to earn 7K. All right, Hammy? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... Uh, push for Miner this week. I hope it's not a kiss of death. I think that Miner gives up four runs or less across both starts. All right, I'm going the opposite side of that coin, Hammy. Over his two <laughs> starts, he's Miner's going to give up five home runs. Wow, Stevie. Uh, maybe it's mano a mano. <laughs> Shallow, challenge. Yeah, uh, yeah, ha- yeah, Ham. You did mention minor start in the home runs as if that was like a standalone event. He kind of gives up home runs every time he starts. I know. I was just thinking the most recent this past week. I try not to look beyond that. All right, guys, let's look at the week ahead. Seven games on the road to close out before the All Star break. Four at City Field with the Mets and three with the Cubs. So let's look at the pitching matchup. So uh, Miner starts us off tomorrow versus Dice K, who gave up five to us the last time we played. Tehran versus DeGrom, who gave up three. And then two starters we didn't see in the last series. Santana goes up against Dylan G, who will be making his first start coming back from a stint on the DL for a strained lat. He has a 2.73 ERA. And then finishing up against the Mets, it's Harang versus Cologne in a battle for the best-looking starting pitcher. (laughs) Uh, Cologne has a 4.04 ERA. He did shut us out once and give up three earned against us uh, in his two starts that we've uh, faced Cologne. So on to Chicago, it's Wood versus Arietta, who is like the Cubs' best pitcher. Now. Uh, particularly now that, yeah, Samarja <laughs> and Hamill are gone. But he's got a 1.78 ERA. Like, I, a lot of the talk was that he was going to be one of the guys getting traded. But I would say not anymore. Uh, Miner versus uh, Edwin Jackson, who's been pretty bad for the Cubs, a 4.99 ERA. And then finishing up, Sunday, Tehran against Travis Wood and his 4.62 ERA. Oh, I thought that was Kerry Wood. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen him in a long time. He would totally dominate us. He totally would. <laughs> All That's right, true. so, Curtis, what do you say? What's your prediction? Um, I'm going to go 5-2, and 3-1, two. 2-1. and, one, two and one. All right, Hammy? I'm going to go one more. I think 3-1, three 3-0, and, one, three and oh, 6 and 1 the week. All right, I will go five and two as well. Both losses for minor. Oh, I gotta ride my shot in the dark. Right? Oh my goodness, it's just a hatred. Slap. I know it's a slap in the, the face. Venom and vitriol. <laughs> All right, folks, that's the show. Please make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher so that you don't miss any of our weekly shows. And as always, check us out at AtlantaBaseballTalk.com for past shows, to check out our blogs, and to post in our comments section. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at ATL Baseball Talk and to like us on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, everyone, and go Braves! Thanks for listening to Atlanta Baseball Talk. 
your weekly podcast for all things Atlanta Braves. To find new shows, to post in our forum, or to send a comment, please visit us at atlantabaseballtalk.com. Had to admit the problem.